Turn your ear, O Lord, and answer. Save the servant who trusts in you, my God. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're very welcome today to this Liturgy of the Word on the 21st Sunday of Ordinary Time. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Liturgy of the Word, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem, then he called the elders, leaders, judges, and scribes of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Then Joshua said to all the people, If you will not serve the Lord, choose today whom you wish to serve, whether the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered, We have no intention of deserting the Lord and serving other gods. Was it not the Lord our God who brought us out of the land of Egypt, the house of slavery, who worked those great wonders before our eyes and preserved us all along the way we travelled and among all the peoples through whom we journeyed? We too will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The Word of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise always on my lips. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast, the humble shall hear and be glad. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. The Lord turns his eyes to the just and his ears to their appeal. They call and the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. 
Evil brings death to the wicked. Those who hate the good are doomed. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. Those who hide in him shall not be condemned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Give way to one another in obedience to Christ. Wives should regard their husbands as they regard the Lord, since as Christ is head of the church, and saves the whole body, so is a husband the head of his wife. And as the church submits to Christ, so should wives to their husbands in everything. Husbands should love their wives just as Christ loved the church and sacrificed himself for her to make her holy. He made her clean by washing her in water with a form of words so that when he took her to himself, she would be glorious, with no speck or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and faultless. In the same way, husbands must love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man to love his wife is for him to love himself. A man never hates his own body, but he feeds it and looks after it. And that is the way Christ treats the church, because it is his body and we are its living parts. For this reason, a man must leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one body. This mystery has many implications, but I am saying it applies to Christ and the Church. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After hearing his doctrine on the Eucharist, many of the followers of Jesus said, This is intolerable language. How could anyone accept it? Jesus was aware that his followers were complaining about it, and he said, Does this upset you? What if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh has nothing to offer. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the outset those who did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. He went on, This is why I told you that no one could come to me unless the Father allows him. After this, many of his disciples left him and stopped going with him. Then Jesus said to the twelve, What about you? Do you want to go away too? Simon Peter answered, Lord, who shall we go to? You have the message of eternal life, and we believe, we know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Since we had a wedding here on Thursday, I thought it best perhaps to focus in on the second reading today, which is about marriage. The Church describes marriage as a partnership of life and love between a man and a woman, which only death can dissolve. That love will be tested in the twists and turns of life. But with God in our lives, no difficulty will be too great to overcome. The marriage feast at Cana is ample testimony to this. Here, Jesus, at Mary's prompting, is instrumental in turning it from a day to forget into a day to really remember. Its impact for married couples is plain for those with eyes to see. The Catholic Catechism teaches that one of the consequences of Adam and Eve's fall from grace was the rupturing of the original harmony which existed between the Creator and his creatures, but also the harmony which should exist between husband and wife. 
But we can reverse the situation if we do what Mary asks us to do at Cana in Galilee. She said, do whatever he, that's her son, Jesus, tells us. When we ignore his teaching, the more vulnerable we become. The rise in divorce is ample evidence of this. In some cases, this can have painful consequences, particularly for children. It can fuel childhood worries and troubles. But Christ came to redeem marriage and heal our wounded nature. He can work through us to redeem any situation. He is the second Adam who comes to our rescue, and Mary is the second Eve who is always there to help us. Now these days in particular, there is a tendency to play down the complementary nature of maleness and femaleness. We're not talking here about individuals who need pastoral guidance in this area. When Pope Francis spoke to bishops at World Youth Day some years ago, his comments gained widespread attention in the press. He said, we are living a moment of the annihilation of man as image of God. Today, children are told that one can choose one's biological identity without regard for the harmful consequences uh, which this leaves in its wake. The distinctiveness of the different genders becomes, for some, just a social construct, interchangeable at will. This has undermined marriage. People dispute that they have a nature given by their bodily identity as male and female, which defines who they are as persons. Pope Francis has warned that the radical ideology of gender would defy the truth about the human person and annihilate man as the image of God. We only reflect the image of God if we respect our male and female identity. In today's second reading, St. Paul tells us, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two become one body. They complement each other when they choose Christian marriage as their vocation in life. It is even tied up with our care of creation, I believe. If we lose respect for gender identity inscribed in our human nature by God himself, then why should we care about his natural creation? The two are intertwined. Cohabitation and the wide use of contraception also defies the vocation of marriage. The latter means that the married couple are diluting the yes they said to each other on their wedding day by arbitrarily withholding their fertility. When the fertility switch is turned off, it doesn't always come on again when we want it. The rupture between the unitive and procreative meaning of marriage designed by the Creator has gradually undermined the true nature of Christian marriage. Saint John Paul II said that this rupture is indicative of an absence of God in people's hearts. To redeem this situation, the Church needs married people to witness more stridently to the beauty of their vocation. God's grace will not desert them. Young people have a right to expect this. As a church, let us not disappoint them.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father has adopted us as brothers and sisters of his only Son, and through the ages has stayed with us and kept us in his love. Let us pray to him for our needs and the needs of the world. Let us pray that our faith and reverence towards Christ in the Eucharist may grow stronger. Lord, hear us. We pray for married couples. May they be faithful to their calling to live together as one. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the people of Haiti who are coping with yet another catastrophic earthquake and tropical storm. Also the people of Afghanistan who are dealing with the shock of the rapid Taliban takeover of most of their country and the millions of people in Ethiopia, South Sudan and Nigeria who are facing extreme danger. Lord, hear us. We pray for the world, our common home, that through God's grace we may hear its cry of the damage done and be moved to protect it for future generations to enjoy. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the recently deceased, especially Kenneth Dakin, who died recently, and, who's, and, and those whose anniversaries occur around this time. May they inherit life eternal. Let us pray to Mary, who interceded with her son at the marriage feast at Cana in Galilee. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Let us pause and pray for concerns of our own. Lord, hear us. God our Father, listen to our heartfelt prayer for those in need and grant us the grace we need to live in accordance with your will on earth, and so merit the place reserved for us in heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.